Hey everybody, welcome to Wednesday Wisdom. So for today's episode, I am going to be covering frozen shoulder or also known as adhesive capsulitis. This is a condition where we get abnormal thickening, fibrosis and inflammation of the GH joint capsule. This is a condition that we see a lot in clinics when people coming in with shoulder pain. We either have people presenting this in their past history or coming in with symptoms of either late stage frozen shoulder or early stage frozen shoulder. So we have lots of different kind of symptomology of this particular condition. There's a lot of disagreement in terms of kind of the etiology and pathology of this actual condition but it's generally seen as an inflammatory and then a fibrosis condition. So we start off with inflammation around the synovial membrane and the capsule, which then over time leads to that fibrosis of the joint capsule itself and therefore restriction, pain and limited function of the shoulder. So most commonly in women, 70% of individuals that are suffering with frozen shoulder adhesive capsulitis are female. Of that, between the ages of 35 to 65, most or any individual suffering with type 2 diabetes, 20% of that population has also seem to have complications with frozen shoulder, but can also be linked to hypothyroidism. So lots of different triggers for this, lots of different causes. In terms of the causes, it's broken down into two categories. We either have primary, which is there's no specific trigger, or there's no clear onset of why this person has frozen shoulder and then linking to secondary, where there's a key or a cause that is linked to this person's symptomology. So this might be a family history of frozen shoulder, this might be previous trauma or conditions of the shoulder, so if we've had any rotator cuff issues, impingement, damage to the actual AC joint or the long head of the biceps, lots of different conditions can predispose or increase the likelihood of developing frozen shoulder. We also have links to any calcification within the shoulder, so within any of the tendons, and also referral from other conditions as well. So, for example, a disc within the cervical spine can also increase the risk of issues occurring through here, but also affect shoulder motion. It typically has an insidious onset, so builds up over time. Some of the key symptoms or signs that people present with, depending on the stage, but normally if it's early onset, they're struggling, kind of turning and rotating the arm, any kind of overhead activity or anything kind of reaching behind or fine movements with the shoulder can start to become quite limited. So that motor function of the upper extremity is altered with adhesive capsulitis. What's generally accepted with regards to pathophysiology and progression of frozen shoulder is there's typically different phases of this. So first of all, we have the acute freezing phase. So this is where we start to get that gradual sharpness within the shoulder joint pain starts to occur within the range of motion of the shoulder so typically kind of turning and lifting and lifting up through the shoulder and normally occurs within two to nine months with the first phase and definitely definitely impacts quality of life and sleep with that person if someone is coming in in the initial phases obviously you want to assess and diagnose accordingly rule out other conditions and then if we're thinking of terms of helping with treatment this is more around pain relief and function what can we do to reduce any tightness that's around in the surrounding structures can we impact neck movement can we start to just keep the shoulder moving this might be through osteopathy massage acupuncture dry needling as well as heat around the area to try and relax through we also want to look at avoiding any activities that make it worse anything that triggers the pain and getting that person with rehab and with exercises to add in very very simple movement within a pain-free range because the aim of the first phase is to keep the shoulder moving and to stop or prevent other compensations from occurring. This is where we might look at kind of pendulums, so you can't really see on the camera, but it's letting the arm drop very, very in a relaxed way, very gentle, and it's keeping that shoulder moving. The second stage is the adhesive frozen or stiffening phase, and this is where we start to get increase or loss of range of motion into the shoulder and possibly increased pain. So this is where the person struggles to use the shoulder day to day. So it becomes a lot more obvious that we're getting more restriction through the shoulder. 
techniques and treatment wise at this second phase is where we'd want to look at very gentle stretching techniques very gentle movement techniques so again very similar aims to the first phase but we'd want to keep that shoulder moving we want to try and keep it as moving as much as possible in the third phase and normally that lasts about four to twelve months in the second phase but again lots of kind of gray area with regards to timing but quite a significant amount of time Third phase, third phase, sorry, is the thawing stage. So this is where we start to get the movement back into the shoulder. This is one of my favorite phases to rehab as we're starting to come out the other side because we can really start to look at specific stretching, more progressive movement and more progressive strengthening. So get you to stabilize around the shoulder, build up that strength over time and improve range of motion. And this is where we would be looking at most of our patients coming in and trying to help with this particular phase because you want to improve quality of life, improve movement, reduce pain, and just help with general day-to-day -day habits and movements of the shoulder and almost regaining that knowledge of what to do with the shoulder and start to move through. And again, this can be anywhere between five to 24 months. So we see, particularly with frozen shoulder, we approximately get about 40% of persistent symptoms after. So it can be a very challenging, challenging condition to help with, very challenging, but there is still stuff that we can implement during every single stage and start to kind of get the person moving better and feeling better other options outside of osteopathy which is also really key to understand and know about and also outside that manual hands-on therapy is corticosteroid injections have been seen to release and relax around the area so potentially that might be an option and if someone is non-responsive to treatment what we may look at or refer for or suggest that someone sees a specialist about in terms of a shoulder specialist would be a capsular release so actually releasing the capsule of the gh joint and seeing if that helps, particularly if we've tried the conservative and the other treatment options first and they're not responding, that might be something to have a look at later. So lots of stuff to kind of think about, lots of stuff to talk about. So yeah, really quite a complicated condition to manage, a complication, complicated condition to look after when you've been diagnosed with it, but lots of stuff that can be implemented at each stage. But first of all, get it diagnosed, get it assessed, get someone to have a look at function and track that progress as we're going through, making sure there's no other complications linked with your condition and hopefully obviously find the advice today really helpful. But any questions, please comment below. I will tag in videos from our frozen shoulder series and any suggestions of any other topics, let me know.